Hey, what's up, guys? And welcome to episode number two. Super grappling match. Welcome to Titan MMA. So this is my home. So a super grappling match on March 4th on the island with Tristan. It's gonna be one of this event right here. So I'm gonna cut to that. So I'm excited about that. I got a message for you, Tristan. If you're watching this, I'm gonna go heel hook your face. I don't even know how I'm gonna do that yet. I don't even know if it's physically possible, but but I'll find a way. Either A, I'll just bring the heel close to your face or turn your chin into a heel and heel hook that somehow. So I'm excited about that match and let's see how it goes. This is where the magic happens. This is where I do all my, develop my special skills to, to go fuck you up, Tristan. Honestly, I think you're a nice, swell guy. I think you're a great mixed martial artist. And I hope you do well in your future, but um, in this grappling tournament, um, I'm here to rip shit up. I'm here to fuck this up. So, enjoy, bitches. Why don't we go check out a highlight reel I put together for Tristan, and afterwards also check out my highlight reel and see where we're at. Relocate. It was actually pretty loud at the gym. People were working upstairs and I want to have a clear audio for you guys. So that was Tristan's video earlier. Um, I wish I had more footage, but that's all that he would give me because he doesn't want me to know his secrets. Like all like six of them. If you're lucky, probably like three. Three jujitsu moves because you do MMA and other stuff. Well, since I'm a narcissist, and I have a camera and I like to film my own shit. This is my stuff. Enjoy.
Do I ever use my magic for my jiu-jitsu? Yes and no. Pretty much how I learned from it. Um, I'd say magic is my teacher. I've been doing it for 19 years now and I intensely, passionately. But what I use in jiu-jitsu from magic is a concept. Like, I know how important it is to have a foundation. You know, not just like, Oh, as a teacher would talk about a foundation, but no, seriously, I know how important it is a foundation. I want to know fancy moves. We want. I want to do fancy moves, but I understand to do fancy moves, right? Fancy moves are just like imagine a building. They're like the patio that sticks out, and then some funky stuff. But all that won't matter if you don't dig deep, and you have your building going all the way rooted underground, and then you have a good foundation. Otherwise, it's going to fall off. You think building, they just start building from wall up? No, they dig down too, right? That's all the parking spot down there. It's not just for, for, for no reason. It keeps it keeps it up like a tree is dug through all the way down. That's what gives it structure. So I understood that if I wanted to learn something fancy, I had to work on my found, foundation. I also knew that some moves I can learn in like short-term moves, and I knew some moves are like long-term moves. Right, so I would invest some time in both of them, and I wouldn't get frustrated w- with a long-term invest, a long-term move like an arm drag. Arm drag is something that's easy to learn but hard to master. Right, some people know it, but how many people use it? You know, so, and I only learned that from magic. It's like a move called the. Um, that move is uh, easy to teach. You learn it in a day. All like, oh, you did, you just did that move, you. Yeah. But it's actually the, one of the hardest moves to execute perfectly. Um, that's actually how I judge most magicians and how they do that move. It's easy, but like you can tell. You just look at the, the, the subtleties in between. Speaking of moves, um, some people have... Um, I know a lot of friends, they have collections. Um, they have their anime collection, toy collections. And if they're like in gear heads, they have all this like fancy equipment I'm kind of jealous of them for all the fancy filming gears and such they have a good collection good stuff and I'm not much of a material possession kind of guy I just have my necessities the tools I need to do what I need to do um, I'm pretty bad I tend to lose stuff physically so but what I do cherish I but then I realized you know what I do have a collection I do I love moves I collect moves I do sleight of hand artistry Paul Harris would like to call the the art of astonishment we deal with sleight of hand there's this other kind of sleight of hand that not many people know about or people think that every magician can do but we actually can't it's more the cheating style we don't really need to do to do them actually it's only like a handful of people I believe in the world that can do this unless you're cheating then you do it or I guess you're a move collector like me who just wants to to show off to other magician. I, it's a bad habit. I worked in a magic shop for a long time. And the stuff that we've all read about, every magician's read about it, everyone knows about it. It's called the second deal. It's dealing from the second. Every magician act like Divi can do it. We can simulate it, but to actually do the move, that takes tons, like hundreds thousands of no life and hours and so I pretty much learned it just to to show off I guess to be an encyclopedia one of those nerds hey guys if you ever want to know how those moves work just contact me I'll show you you know what maybe maybe I can be a hand model so if any agents out there who need some like um making some sleight of hand stuff you can call me I can do that shit I do martial arts I can do movie kickboxing, movie kickboxing, because I still need to work on my sparring. I'm getting better though. Ken's helping on that shit. Anyways, that's it. That's my video po- uh, video blog for today. Um, I'm going to end it off with one of my collection. Guys, the legendary motherfucking second deal. Sleight of hand level, god hands, nerd. No life. Enjoy.